All right, we're back for game two. I get to be on the play, which is right where I want to be, and hopefully we'll have something to play before turn three. Six, seven. And I suppose this will be acceptable. In honor of BBD. Oh, come on. Don't do it to me. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> So your normal partner here, BBD, he keeps... Man, the new scry rule, too, on mulligans? Jeez. All right, so I've got a hand where if I draw a land, my hand is great. If I don't draw a land, my hand is fine-ish. This card's really good against his deck because he has a bunch of edict effects. This uh, this card's okay, this is just a good way to get started, this is very painful, and this is the main reason that we are kind of playing a red deck in general, because this card's so good in the format right now, so... I think... So, keep or snap keep? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no mulligans ever, let's go. Alright, go. Alright, here we go. Ah! I'm pretty sure this is the... <sighs> The only Elvish Mystic deck that I've ever played where I just like never play Elvish Mystic on turn one. So uh, I've been I've been teased by my draw step. Now I have a real decision to make yet again. You can probably infer from the information what I drew if you take a moment. But um, I'm going to tease oh, Pete's. All right, I'm going to play Mana Confluence as land number one, nineteen and a Hasty Swift Spear. All right, nineteen each. This is the worst card in the deck. Go. Forest? <laughs> it's a green producing land that's worse than the forest. Oh, the temple, I guess. Yes, sir. Go. Alright. The old 2 1. So this works out okay that he's starting off with a den protector. And you just get to temple wild slash attack for two? I uh, get to do both those things. So I'm going to start by playing a temple. A little scry action here. Keep this one on the top shelf. Um. Yeah, we're going to go slashing. Alright, so you go to 18, I go to 17. You'll take two. And I'm done. I'm at 18, you're at 17. So this is where things can get a little hairy, because you can have deathness right Alright, now we're going to go to 16. I'll just play a Liliana and pass. So 16, 18. Untap. Draw my card. We know that's on top. That one's obvious. The play, not so much. But it's actually not as hard as it might appear on the surface. We're going to start by playing Wooded Foothills. And then we are going to play... We're going to sacrifice this. So let's go to 17. Hordling Outburst. That would be easy. I am going to cast a Dragon Fodder, however. I'm going to... Dragon Fodder stuff with flames? Eh, actually, am I going to do that? This is actually a little harder than I thought. Your draws have been great. They haven't been bad. <laughs> yeah, I think that's... I wonder if Ray played against any red decks this weekend. I don't think he did. There's like none in the tournament. Because there just never are any. It's really strange. I'm going to play a Dragon Fodder. I'm going to take one and play a Zergo. And then I'm going to Sago, because I'm not going to attack my 2-3 into your 2-3 that has lifelink. And I took one to cast this. So, 16-16. Okay. Liliana being a 2 3 is a real pain. Three mana. Now we're going to play a morph, and okay. then it'll be your turn after I get a morph token. Alright. Uh, oh, they're right here. Alright, so we know these three cards are my grip. We draw a card. This is an important draw step. Magic is really easy sometimes. <laughs> Uh, you don't have only mana spells. Yeah, you don't like have any one mana spells. And that morph is probably a den protector. Maybe it's a death misraptor, but I'm going to lightning strike this. Okay, sure. I'll draw a card. Okay. Unless you want to kill this before this dies. Uh, no, you're good. All right, draw from the hair specs. Yep. Uh, trigger prowess from the strike, 
and we are an aggressive deck, so if he wants to take his turn blocking my goblin token, he can do that. I don't mind, because I'd get a lot more damage through. So I attack with all of my creatures. So he is currently a 2-3? Correct. Alright, so if you had another wild slash, I have to imagine that you would just slash this hair specs in, in battle. So he probably just has another creature to follow up on his mana confluence. Although, he might just be trying to level me to see how greedy I am with his hair specs. Because if I block his swift spear with my hair specs, he could slash me and then it saves his swift spear. I also could just block a goblin token, keep my hair specs, and then I take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 11. You take, yeah, take 5 if you do that. Yeah, so I would just. So by blocking the swift spear, I'm basically saving a turn a damage and I think I'm just actually gonna block a goblin token. Okay. Uh, damage you take five. Yep, I go I to lose, eleven. I lose myself in the battle. Um that's my turn. Citadel. You're at 16. I don't think we need to attack yet. So oh, fast. God. I was really <laughs> hoping you wouldn't do that. <laughs> he has a collected company in his hand, viewers at home, who can see his hand. Card's great. I'll draw. Ugh. I guess you could miss. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, there are only, what, 32 creatures in the deck? Yeah, there's a, there are a couple. All right, here's the Gripper Ripper. And, oddly well, enough, I just haven't had any time to cast this thing yet. And I still don't think I'm supposed to cast this thing. So now the question is if I'm even supposed to attack. If I'm supposed to do anything. Or if I'm just supposed to hope that his collective company isn't particularly good. There are some misses. I mean, I'm casting it whether you attack or not, yeah, so that's, that's the decision is all yours. It's so. definitely true. There are some misses. There are some real hits. Liliana is a big-time hit. Um, Deathmish Raptor is a big-time hit. Den Protector, Seder Wayfinder, those are pretty big misses. So, I don't think I can win by sitting here, but, I don't know, maybe. I could... There's also the the ability to try to set up for a very large Atarkas command turn. And that might be a decent route to go. So, I think... I think I'm going to get the easy part out of the way. Well, there we go. <laughs> I'm going to flip mountain. And now I need to develop a game plan, because that's what magic is all about, is having a game plan and executing it. So, these are the options for the turn. Now, if I play this... I would play it second main phase because I don't want this to die and because there's no sense in making a go another goblin token that would probably die. If I play this, I get four tokens and I get to trigger this and then that's like a pretty decent attacker. So I think that's what I want to do is I'm going to play a dragon fodder, trigger prowess, and I'm going to play another one and take one. Where did Eric Smith come from? <laughs> Get out of here, Eric. You did that. You did that. <laughs> uh, take one. I go to 15. Yep. Um, so now this is a 3-4. And this is like a pretty good attacker while still giving me a good Atarkas command turn if I draw Atarkas command. So as he mentioned, he's going to be casting Collected Company anyway. There are some things that can go poorly here. But I think on the balance, this is a pretty good attack with just this. I don't think attacking with Zergo is particularly good because if you do Company into Liliana, it dies, Death Miss Raptor it dies, and depending on what you company into, you're probably just happy trading it, so I'm just going to attack with my 3-4 and hope your collective company isn't good. Alright, well hopefully this is great and then we get to draw some cards. Have at it. Six lands. Four lands. This is beatable. Okay. Alright, so we're going to mill with our Wayfinder. Okay. And miss. But we're going to put the raptor there. Okay. 
And we trade. Yep. Trigger the hair specs and draw card. And everything's coming up Millhouse. Um, that means you drew a rally. <laughs> Go well, ahead. It wasn't a rally, but <laughs> it was a non-land spell, which at this point is perfect. Oh, that's a good one, too. All right. I think I play this, and there goes my route to victory off your mana confluence. Ding. But so I can I think that I play this one. The other option would be just to cast this. But since we have two raptors in the graveyard, I think we just go ahead and play a creature face down. All right, you have a morph, and then I just pass the turn. Okay, I'm untapping. I have one card in my hand. We're gonna add another card to it. Not the best I've ever seen. Not the worst. We're gonna have to buckle in for a bit of a longer game here, which is bad, but we don't really have an option. So this morph could be a den protector. Uh, it wouldn't be a Deathness Raptor, that's rather unlikely. It would be something that Chris can unmorph. Could be one of these two. Yeah, it could be a Horus Vex. It would be something that he can unmorph on his turn to get back his Deathness Raptors. I think it's unlikely that he would play a Deathness Raptor face down in this situation. So, if we were to attack with all of our creatures, something would unmorph and come back, bring back two Deathness Raptors, and we'd get slaughtered. So, my play this turn is actually pretty straightforward, even though it's not particularly sexy, which is go to my second main phase. Use my mana confluence for black mana, thanks Urborg. Play Goblin Rabble Master, play Foundry Denizen, uh, hope to draw Tarkus Command next turn. <laughs> Your turn. Alright, well we are going to flip this guy up, we're going to get back a couple raptors, and then at this point, so I already have this, but I think that I just want to get Another collected company with the Den Protector. This is not uh, going to be an easy game to win. Alright. So we drop our turn. Oh, baby. That was a good one. Alright, we'll play our black producing one swept teeth. <laughs> and I think that here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So I think that what I do here is we'll just play another horror specs. Okie dokie. And then we just pass the turn. It's, uh, I don't it's, think there's any reason to attack you. No, because I have to attack you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's do or die. Come on, sweetness. Oh, no. Not, not exactly what the doctor ordered. Okay. There are worse draws. This isn't a particularly good one, and this turn is going to go quite poorly for us because all our goblins have to attack. But we get to attack with a lot of them and maybe push through a little bit of damage and run a runner some burn spells. So, even though that is relatively unlikely, we must play on. Uh, black mana off my mana influence. Play a Hordling Outburst. Yep. Trigger three times on my Foundry Street Denizen. And then you get a fourth trigger from the Rival Master. I do. As I go to the attack step, this will trigger. This brings a Goblin along with it. That'll trigger this again. So it's a five power creature. And there's some fun text on the Rival Master that says my creatures have to attack. So... This is a goblin. This will have to attack. These goblins will have to attack because they do not have summoning sickness. The question is if I'll be attacking with Goblin Rabble Master this turn. Because this would cause Chris to have to block with these two creatures at the very least because they're both really big. You have one, two, three, four, five, six creatures on the battlefield. I have one, two, three, Plus four, five, six. No yeah. information. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, five, eight. So you could, if you hit with Collect a Company, get them all. 
you could potentially block them all, and a lot of these attacks are pretty bad. I will be conceding this game soon, probably, but I think I'm going to sit back with Rabble Master, and maybe something good will happen. So, there are my attacks. Alright, well, that's company. I'm not sure I have a winning line either way. I guess maybe I'm supposed to attack with Rabble Master and hope you just 0 for 6 on company and get some damage through. Uh, let's see here. So I think that I just take these two. It's not pretty, but it's something. We're going to be drawing a lot of cards this turn. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to take those two. I'm going to trigger the Merciless Executioner and the Marauder. Um, I'm going to sacrifice the Wayfinder to the Executioner. Okay. Trigger two higher specs. I need to sacrifice a creature too. Uh, Zergo is pretty bad on this board, but it's a decent attacker if it ever comes down to that, so... One of the well, I guess one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess I just sacrifice one of these. I, don't, I think this is better than sacrificing an attacking goblin. Because I, I think I'd rather. Yeah, I think it's, it's negligible, but boom. All right, so we'll draw two from the hair specs. And go to blocks. Yep. Alright, so this jerk's gonna be here, and then these six will block these six goblins. Should have used Eric Smith tokens. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Uh, you're getting more cards. And then we'll draw two more cards with the executioner from the hair specs. Is it my turn? Well, oh, that was your turn. That, oh my god, that was my turn. It's it's your turn. It is. These versus videos are so much fun. <laughs> Alright, so draw. Okay, so I can. Man, I'm not finding an Antuco husk. It's a little awkward, but I don't think it really matters. So you're at 15. Uh, I am 15 to 6, 11. 6, 9, 12, 12. So you have, to, you, have, you have to block everything. So let's just do this. We'll cast a Liliana. Okay. Now I can. What happens if I rally for three? Uh. That's probably fine, to be honest, because I can just get rid of a bunch of your stuff. I thought you get to draw some cards. Yeah. I get to, like, eat it twice, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to rally for three. Symmetrical, right? I get the... No, no, no. no. no okay. Alright, so... These two... I only have two creatures this... in my creatures. This and these come into play. So now, if I, if I remember correctly, I put the triggers on the stack, but then I have to choose one of these before I resolve any of the triggers. Uh, I believe that is correct. So uh, we've got... I'm going to mill, and then I'll sacrifice. Okay. Uh, but we're going to keep one of the Lilianas. Get a Zambi. Uh, and then we're going to mill. And I get a land of more waste. And then we sacrifice. Ooh, draw, card, draw two oh, cards. Oh, yeah, I do have to draw two yeah. cards. For the three! Three. Yeah. One, two, three. And then we'll sacrifice this. Uh, I have to sacrifice a people. Yeah. And I'll draw three for the higher specs. And then we're going to cash in our Liliana to get an Executioner. 
and I will sacrifice a hair specs draw to two. the executioner. I draw two, and you have to sack a guy as well. Spell striker down. And then we'll go to battles. Yep. And these are all the creatures that can battle. Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a very prideful thing here. I'm going to block your. Uh, let's go with let's go with Grim Horror specs with Ravel Master. Yep. Okay. Uh, the Cedric Phillips Goblin Token will not block. So I'll be taking <laughs> three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen. Conveniently go down to one. And I lose the hair specs. You do. I uh, draw a card. Yes. Couple a couple of cards in your hand there. Yeah. I'm gonna make you go through your discard step. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> I'm gonna. It'll be your turn. I'm gonna untap. Take take a draw here. Oh yeah. Now this is, is that now, a good one. This is very fitting actually. See, this is a fire drinker Seder. This is a card. <laughs> <laughs> this is a card that Perfect card. Patrick likes a lot, and I think it's horrible. So side by side here are Fire Drinker Seder and, and, and myself. <laughs> the team we watch every weekend it's, on the open series. It's basically the booth. This is a sunburnt Patrick and me. I'll tap this for a red. All, All right. right. You're going to win this game. 